This is Redefining the Counterculture on Witten Radio. Make sure to check out our website at wittenradio.com. Hey guys, you're listening to another episode of Redefining the Counterculture right here on Witten Radio. Today, we're joined by actress Stephanie Bloom. Stephanie, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm a huge fan of your work and... Um, I'm super excited to have you on today's show. We're talking about your newest film, 2050. And uh, first off, I just want to ask you, you know, how was your flight? Because I know you've, you've been kind of on the go today. Yeah, you know, um, 2050 is having their theatrical tour, and they're hitting the big city. So we had our um, New York City premiere on Valentine's Day, and actually today we're having our L.A. one. And, you know, it just so happened that it happened to snow in New York, so it delayed things uh, quite a few hours. But I got here, and, and, and it's happening tonight. I'm excited. Awesome, awesome. It's uh, it's a really, really groundbreaking film um, in the sense that I don't know. I mean, I think that there have been other films about it, but it's it's so poignant to what's going on right now because you've got, um, I think there's like this um, – tech company that's partnered with a brothel overseas that's going to start, you know, doing, you know, having, you know, robot companions. And then the bot is looking at having, you know, sex dolls and you look at it and it's, it's kind of like uh, people are turning to technology for, you know, not only entertainment, but gratification now. Um, so when you were first, how did you first become involved with the project and, what was it that just kind of drew you to the film? Um, well, when I had heard about the film, I um, I just saw two things. I had never done sci-fi before, and that to me just sparked my interest. And then once I found out about the character Sophia, I just thought, wow, she's she's a robot, but she's not playing a robot. She you know she has all these human characteristics, and you know nothing about her character was to me, robotic. Um, it, it's more or less like, she, it, I think it's the opposite end because Michael in the film creates her and it's to his liking. It's not that uh, there's any type of attraction towards a certain type of robot. Absolutely, absolutely. How did you, um, I guess, how did you prepare for the role? Because, I mean, like you said, you hadn't really done sci-fi before, um, how did you get in the mindset of playing this part? Um, you know, I just thought to myself, um, how am I going to play a robot and not act like one? So I, I just thought to myself, how could I be so monotone and, and get the point across of being what Michael wants me to be? Um, so I just kept it. I just fed off of um, David Bond's character. He plays Michael in the film. And I, I kind of just went from there. He he goes through a lot in the film where, you know, he's dealing with his wife and his home life. And then on the other hand, he's, you know, taking me out in public. So these sorts of things that were like, okay, nobody realizes that who I play and the other robots play, nobody realizes that they're robots. So I thought, you know, let me, uh, let me keep it monotone. Let me keep it, you know, um, let me feed off of his character. You know, um, I mostly in all of my scenes, if he was angry, if he was sad, if he was happy, when we, um, you know, went exploring in the film, we ventured outside of the parlor, you know, uh, I fed completely off of his character. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in terms of the filming process, was it, what was it like? Was it particularly arduous or um, did it come relatively easy just in terms of, you know, filming each day? Um, you know, I thought that with this movie, um, it was it was actually sort of mellow. You know, it, it, this isn't your typical sci-fi movie. Um, we, we weren't shooting people up. There wasn't explosions. Um, there wasn't fighting. It was sort of a love story. So um, we we were able to take that and sort of run with it. And I think all of the special effects were done afterwards. And so I think filming the movie, um, just in the various different locations, um, was sort of easy for us. I love it. I love it. Um, what did you, I guess, what was your most memorable part of just being in the film and 
and actually, you know, embarking on the, the work that you did for the film? Was there a particular scene or a particular person that, you know, kind of helped to um, give you an overall, like, positive experience doing the film? Um, well, I think two things come to mind automatically. Um, one being, you know, the love scenes. <laughs> those were, um, those, that, those are something I'm, I'm not going to forget. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, second, I, I just remember being on set and I would say it every single day I was there, I, the colors, the colors that you see in the film were there in person. And I just thought it's such rich, um, beautiful red tones, the blue tones, um, Jared Weibel, the, um, the DP, just really just brought it out. Uh, I just was amazed by, like, the, the coloring on set. Absolutely, absolutely. I um, <laughs> you mentioned something about the love scenes. I, was gonna, I don't know if anybody's ever asked you this, but is it strange or is it weird, I guess, um, having to, to do a love scene? I mean, just being on set with – those many people and everything? Oh, absolutely. I think um, doing a love scene when you don't know somebody that well. I mean, David and I, we FaceTime, we talk. But to actually just sort of jump into bed together when you don't really know each other, it's right. definitely uncomfortable. But now I can say we're best of friends. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> wow. Um, okay. So um, in terms of, I guess, is it, Okay, so, for instance, like with this film, I'm sure you were told ahead of time that you would have to do a love scene. Um, it, when you – let's say if you if you got down to it and you were uncomfortable, would you be contract, contractually obligated to continue the love scene? Oh, not at all. Actually, um, you know, we worked together in all those scenes, and when it did come down to doing those scenes, it was just – skeleton crew i mean it wasn't uh it was just me david and princeton and jared and if there was something in the slightest that i was uncomfortable with princeton automatically was like okay no nope, we'll go with it you know we'll, we'll work it out and it wasn't it was very very professional right on right on um so <laughs> do you plan to do any more sci-fi films because i know that um, your body of work is, is more, you know, action, drama. Um, would you ever do a sci-fi film in the future? Absolutely. Um, I would love it if 2050 had a sequel. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I mean, the, the film, you know, has an open ending, so I feel like, you know, they could run with the character Sophia, or if there was a different type of film. Yeah, I absolutely love the sci-fi the field. Excellent, excellent. What's the biggest, uh, you know, I guess what would be the biggest takeaway that people get from this movie? Because I know it's it's more of a, it, you know, the vehicle is more of a comedy, you know, satirical type comedy um, within sci-fi, but it's, it's got a good message to it. Um, having, you know, acted in the film, what would you say is the biggest takeaway from this film? Um, you know, I just think people need to have an open mind and think, you know, what makes one person happy might not work for another. And that's, I think, what the message you see in the film is, you know, people are trying different things and it might shock some and it might be comfortable for others. But I think mostly you just have to have an open mind, very thoughtful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um so tell me, what got you into acting? I want to kind of segue for a little bit. Um, you've done, you know, quite a few uh, indie projects, and you were also on Gotham, which <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of people know about. Um, what was it that initially gave you your start or just kind of the catalyst to get the acting bug, so to speak? Um, I think for most, and definitely for me, it's something that you – just love to do and I've been doing it since I was nine years old I've been doing it since I was very little and I just it's one of those things that I've stuck with and I'm always going to do um you know I just think and especially living in New York you're you're probably in the acting capital so um I've just always grown and loved it I've done theater when I was in high school and it just progressed from there and it's just I just have a love for the art very nice very nice 
um, who are some actors or actresses that kind of have inspired you and kind of helped to define your style of acting? Um, I think, you know, I feel like a lot of celebrities now, they do it all. Um, I, I look up to so many. I mean, look at Jennifer Lopez. I mean, she's a singer. She's a dancer. She's an actor. Um, look at Justin Timberlake. He can act. He could dance. He could sing. Um, and I love that nowadays, that not one person is glued down to just one category. So, you know, uh, with acting, I also love to model. And I used to dance when I was younger. So, it's, you know, I just feel like nowadays you could, you could kind of do it all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It is amazing because, you know, it's people that are talented that have talent, they're not pigeonholed into doing one thing. I mean, the sky's the limit. And I think that that's amazing. Um, yeah, I feel like, you know, not one person is really known for one thing anymore. So if, if you know, if I could dabble into another area, I would love to do that, too. I think you just have to have a passion for this art. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, to date, what has been your favorite project that you've worked on? Obviously, 2050. <laughs> but, but aside from 2050, um, you know, I, I'm doing this um, this TV series actually right now. It's called Little Cupid, and it's the exact opposite of the character that I'm portraying in 2050. I'm um, playing a wife who lost her husband in war and we had a daughter and she can see him, um, but I can't. And it's just this, um, this kind of little story of, you know, God sent him back to earth to play little Cupid and set him up to other people up to fall in love. Only when it comes to my turn, you find out, Hmm, will he keep his wings? Will he get sent back? And it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful story. So that's, that's what I'm working on now, and I just absolutely love that character as well. Man, I love it. I love it. Um, I want to uh, go back just for a second. Now, with 2050, I know that it's got a limited limited theatrical run um, in some cities like Nashville, Atlanta. Um, do you know um, if there's any plans for an, ex- an expanded uh, theatrical run? I believe after this big city tour, they're going to release it to AMC theaters. And what you can do is on their website, if you don't see your city listed, they have a section where you can demand it. And it's actually kind of fun. So I think wherever they get the most votes, they're going to have a premiere there. And you could catch it in any AMC after this run. Very nice. Very nice. And what about, um, uh, I guess, digital uh, distribution? Do you know if there's any plans for, for that as well? Yeah, they're definitely going to have a video on demand, um, but I'm not exactly sure of when that's going to be done. I, I definitely after the theatrical tour that they're having. Very nice, very nice. And how have the screens been going? Because I know that you said you're you're currently on the on tour, um, on on a tour, so to speak. Um, how how has it been going? How has the reception for the so- film been? I think the response is great. Actually, New York was sold out. We had so many friends and family there. Um, People came to see it from all over, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. And today we're having ours in L.A. And we have a a couple of special friends coming out to come see it. Um, We have a pro wrestler, uh, Mick Foley. He's coming out tonight to come see it. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun. But, yeah, we have Shannon Holt who um, and, and Chris Reclinta is, is coming out tonight. Princeton, of course, will be there. Um, Dean Kane is going to be there for the Q&A also. Legend, so legend. It's going to be a full house and a lot of Superman fans. I love it. I love it. It's awesome. I um, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a film that is uh, that's interesting and – it's, um, you know, that old thing that looks can be deceiving. I think if you were just on the outside looking in, um, you really would not, wouldn't know just how, how much this film, how amazing it is, and, you know, the, the message that it's got behind it, um, which I think is just really, really neat. And it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. I think, I think that there could be a sequel. I mean, it's a it's a car ride. I think I think it could be done. Yeah, I mean, you know, 
I, I think people love sci-fi, and I don't see that there's enough out there of it. And once every, once in a while, there's a movie that comes along, and you're like, wow, that that's you you remember it, you know? You remember uh, comedy movies, your favorite comedy movies. You remember your favorite drama, but there's always those sci-fi movies where you're like, yes, I have seen that, I know that, and I I definitely think <laughs> is a great art. It definitely is. It's unlike no other. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, I wanted. To, uh, I also wanted to ask you. Now you've done some television acting as as well as you know film. Um, out of the two that you've done, do you prefer one or one over the other? Um, you know, I I love film. Um, I just love that you can get so in depth with a character, and I, it's just something that I, I always gravitate to. Um, you know, and, and TV is great, too, but usually um, from what I've experienced in the past, it's, it's mostly like a guest star um, role, so it's not much, you know, I come in for a few days and I do my part and that's it. But for film, I mean, you could film for a three months straight, you could film for two years straight. Um, and I just think, like, I, I, I love getting lost in a role, so I definitely stick with film over any else. I love it. I love it. When you initially get a role, is there, do you have any, I guess, any type of uh, free rituals or um, exercises that you do to help you better prepare for the role and, and to get into the mindset of the character? Um, what I, I usually go through, like, um, stages. I, when I get a script, I'm like, okay, let me memorize this. Um, once I have my lines down, then I go to the next step. I'm like, okay. Let me let me find out about this character. Like, how would she portray this to the other one? And then I go from there. I say, okay, well, what is the relationship she's having with this other person? And then, okay, who else is in this project that I could, you know, maybe tweak my performance for? And it just kind of goes from there. And then I think once you get on set and you know all these things, it just it plays out beautifully. But that's normally my routine. I just I'm like, okay, let me get my lines down. And then, you know, I practice them different ways. I'm like, okay. And then I try to find out what the other characters are like so I can sort of be in that, that zone. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of lines, does, I guess, in terms of, like, script reading and lines, does it come naturally to you or is it something that you really have to truly work at? Um, it depends, you know. Um, I feel like the the bigger the project, I have to really buckle down and, you know, I'll do maybe a couple of scenes at a time or what I'm asked to be prepared for. Other things, I'll just memorize the entire thing. I guess it all depends on how much time I have. Right on, right on. I love it. I love it. Um, Stephanie, where can our uh, listening audience find out more about you and kind of keep abreast of what you're doing? Um, I'm usually... I'm on, um, you know, Facebook. You can follow me there. Um, I'm, I'm on Instagram. Um, I usually like to get on Twitter, too, and just I, – I, I like Twitter because I feel like you could retweet your tweets, and you'd be like, you know what? I'm going to put that one instead. Same <laughs> here. Some people, Same yeah, here. let me retweet that. Um, but you can find me there, and um, or stephaniebloom.com. You can also find my work there, too. I love it. I love it. Stephanie, I'm all out of questions, but I um, wanted to thank you so much for joining us on today's show, and I wanted to just open the floor to you if there's anything uh, you'd like to say to our listening audience. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, I'm all out of questions, but I just wanted to open the floor to you if there's anything you'd like to say to our listening audience. Oh, I mean, I think everybody should just get out there and check out 2050's theatrical tour run. Um, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I really think that the audience is going to react so well to this movie. Um, go there and check out 2050. I love it. I love it. Stephanie, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Guys, that was our exclusive interview with actress Stephanie Bloom. If you're listening to this on SoundCloud, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're also available for iPhone users. If you've got an uh, iPhone or an Apple product of any type, uh, you can uh, listen to the show by just going to the iTunes store uh, search for a name, Witten Radio, and once you search for a name, you can uh, download straight to your phone or your device. Uh, we're also available for Android users. If you've got an Android phone or an Android device, you can um, listen to us by just going to the Google Play Store, search Google Play, search music, search for our name, and again, you can hear this interview. Last but not least, we're available for Roku, uh, and we're also on YouTube. If you've got a Roku player or a Roku smart television, you can watch this interview right in the privacy of your own home. 
We have over 200 hours of original pro content programming and interviews all free of charge. Uh, from the Roku Channel Store, just uh, search for our name. Once you search for our name, you can download the app and begin streaming all free of charge. Last but not least, we're on YouTube. And if you've got a YouTube account or if you just surf it, you know, uh, ca casually, you can search for our name and you can just um, find us there. We're all there. All of our episodes are there. And you can actually subscribe. Uh, we have content that comes out uh, almost daily and uh, which – there's more to come, and we just appreciate you guys. And, uh, again, you can check out more on Stephanie. We'll put the link to her website, Embody This Post. And uh, thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you next time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you so much for bearing with me today. You're welcome. It's no problem at all. I, I know how travel is, and it can be it can be crazy, you know, just <laughs> getting, you know. You know, it hasn't really snowed in New York much this winter, and I'm like, no way. Of all days, it was like almost five inches there, and I'm like, you know what? Not. That's right. It hasn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, that is something. Yeah, you're you're right. It hasn't. Yeah, there's just been like you know an inch or two dusting here and there, and I'm like, wow, okay, now it's really coming down, and everything was delayed. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy to think about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, I'm going to get to work um, on editing this, and I should have it up within uh, about an hour or so. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Walter. You're welcome. No, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Um,